Okay, so in the afternoon what we'll do is the beer game, right? Uh, the idea of this beer game is that we simulate a supply chain uh, or a value chain as we were discussing in the, bar in the morning. Uh, you, you may be a little excited about the, the, the fact of that this is a beer game, but the beer is virtual, everything is virtual, so there's nothing that we could be too happy about, except that uh, we will use this uh, as an exercise. Uh, if, if we had more people in this room, in, in this class, I, I would at least have two or three different groups to compete against each other. We can make no, yeah, well, I need I need four. Let's say I need four people, at least four people in a group. Oh, okay. So what we will do here is uh, I'll show you. We have four positions uh, to to be in which people have to be placed. So maybe two of you will work together, and the others will work uh, alone. But I, what I'm saying is that if if this was a larger group, if we if we had uh, a, a multiple by uh, multiple of four there uh, that permitted, we would have a competition between different supply chains. We will only be able to simulate here one supply chain. Right, so, uh, and, and our supply chain will involve, um, let me show you the, the screen here, will involve a retailer, okay, a wholesaler, the wholesaler is the company that sells to the retailer, a distributor, that is a company that sells to the wholesaler, and a manufacturer, that is the company that sells to the distributor. And of course, there would be also here a, a the customer, the customer is uh, the one who buys from the retailer, okay? I'm going to be the, the customer, I'm the only one buying beer, buying and drinking beer here, you're only trading beer, okay? Um, uh, we will have each one of you uh, assume or, or, or be in a, a different position, so maybe uh, maybe we could have, uh, uh, so that we sort of see the, 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 the supply chain happening here, maybe we could have uh, 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 Ola Kunli being the manufacturer, yeah. okay, you're, you're the furthest away, upstream from me, from the customer, uh, and then considering that, that Serge and, uh, and Salesh uh, uh, are sitting together, maybe you two could work together and be the distributor, yeah. right? Mariana. Prabhu could be the wholesaler, Mariana and Marianne is going to be the retailer. Okay, uh, and I'm, 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 I will, so I will buy from Marianne, she will buy from you, Prabhu, that you, you'll buy from them, and then uh, uh, they will buy from, from the manufacturer. Uh, there are some, uh, before I include you here in the game, and by the way, you will all need to be in front of a computer, or you, I guess you could also do it from your cell phones, if you wish, but uh, the computer may be, may be better, so if you can uh, have it available. Uh, before, but before I connect you to it, uh, I want to show you a little bit of, uh, of how, how it will work. And, and, and to do that, I will start here with the screen of the distributor. Right? You will notice that each of uh, you will have a different screen in front of you. Right? We will be all be uh, working on the same uh, worksheet. This is a Google Drive uh, 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 spreadsheet. Um, uh, but each, each one uh, will be working on a different tab. No, notice this tab is here below. And, uh, and you will not Sorry, and you will not uh, you will not uh, change and see what happens in the other tabs, right? Um, first time I I, I I prepared a version of this game many years ago, possibly still in the 90s. I remember that I coded it in in ASP ASP. It was a Microsoft language at that time. I don't even know if it, if anyone still uh, programs anything on that. But that that was my first version of the beer game, an electronic version of the, the beer game. Uh, but later on, I just thought it was much easier to simply, when, when, when I started having problems with that version that had took me so, so long to, to code, uh, because it didn't fit the computers in, in my lab any longer, I thought, why not just have this on Google Drive? Of course, we have some inconvenience here, uh, that is, Google, Google Drive is very flexible, but at the same time, it, it, cannot, it, does not prevent, uh, it does not allow me to prevent you from seeing the other, the, the, the other tabs of your colleagues, so we'll just have to agree that we will not do it, okay? And there's some other things that we'll have to take care of. You'll see that in each one of these uh, uh, spreadsheets, anywhere I click, there's a formula. See, see there's always a formula there. Uh, anywhere I click, there's a formula. And if you mess up with that formula, uh, well, I will try and solve it, but uh, I, I, may, I may find uh, it uh, uh, probable, but maybe you should still be there so that we have the supply chain no. In, in the same line, if, if you don't mind, you know. No, no, you're not. No, you, you do not. Well, negotiation will happen online. This is our our supply chain is very technological. Everything will happen 
uh, on ideology that we work to, to, uh, together uh, are, 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 are our distributors simply because we have four spots and we have five people. Okay, uh, so be careful here with the you know with the not to mess up with my formula. The only column in which we do not have any formulas is this column I, right? Which is the column in which you will be uh, including your decision at each round. Uh, so, well, you're, you're, I'm saying you will include your decision. What is your decision about? Everyone will be deciding here uh, about how much you want to buy from your supplier. Okay. Ba and, and basically what we'll be doing in this, this game is we want, we want to make sure that our customer is served, that our customer gets uh, the beer that is requested. Uh, and uh, we want to do that at, a, at the lowest possible cost because, of course, keeping inventory, keeping, keeping stock is something that usually incurs in additional cost, right? Uh, by the way, I remember when I was uh, your age, I had these very entrepreneurial friends who decided at that stage Brazil was opening its, uh, its doors to, to the international markets and he had heard that there was this Mexican uh, beer that was really cheap and that he could import a container and he would get rich selling it at the beach in summer. So that was his plan. He did import the container of, of beer from Mexico. Uh, he did take it to the, to the beach, settled there a little pub or whatever arrangement there to sell it during summer. And then it ran that summer as it never rains. Uh, it rained so much that he didn't sell. He, he sold very little beer. And then uh, I remember that for five or six years after that, we were drinking his inventory. So we would have parties and drink out of <laughs> his stock. And he said, well, there's one advantage of being a failure as, a, as an entrepreneur. You can drink your, your, your losses <laughs> instead of... Uh, but anyway, you don't want to, to drink your losses. So you will buy uh, beer in quantities that you think that are reasonable to supply your, your market. Okay? Uh, let me go again. Uh, the, the, the spreadsheet for the distributor for the distributor and for the wholesaler are exactly the same in terms of uh, well, the layout. Uh, the retailer and the manufacturer are a little different. I will show you the differences later, but let's start checking here. Let's see the wholesaler's um, spreadsheet so that you understand how things will go. For example, for the first, uh, we call here weeks, but it's the rounds of the game, right? For the first week, you, you the wholesalers uh, over there, Prabhu, uh, you have uh, an inventory of 20 cases of beer. Uh, as soon as the retailer decides on, on uh, orders to you, uh, the retailer's order will appear here. And as soon as uh, the retailer's orders appear here, uh, this other uh, elements here will be also calculated. I'll, I'll do the following. I'll go to the retailer here. I'll pretend that I'm Mariam. And uh, I will include a first order here of, I don't know. See, she, she had 20, she, she also had 20, 20, uh, let, let, let me let me take this off before so it doesn't distract us. She also had uh, 20 uh, cases of beer in, in stock. Uh, my order to her for the first week was 10 cases of beer, 10 cases or 10 beers or whatever. Uh, she, she was able to, of course, if she had 20 in stock and I ordered 10, she was able to deliver the 10 that I wanted, okay? She did not miss any sales because what I ordered was less than what she had in stock. Uh, and she ended the, the week with a final inventory of 10, right? So because she gave me 10 and she, she still keeps 10 of the inventory that she had at the beginning, right? Is this clear, right? And then, and then she ordered here, I had put 30, maybe and now I'll, I'll reduce this considering that she already has 10. I will just order another 10 here, okay? Notice that when I ordered, when, when I, when Marian ordered uh, 10, it already calculated a few other things here. Let's see. Uh, uh, this is, uh, well, she, conf she actually confirmed the dispatch uh, of those 10 that the, the, the customer had uh, ordered. So that was put in, into the truck to be sent to the, to the customer. Uh, she didn't have, well, be be the, the, the world has just started, right? There was not, nothing happened before week one. So uh, she did not have any, um, any beer in transit that was being transported from her uh, to, so, oh, sorry. This, this is confirmed by the, by, the, by the wholesaler. So it's this 10 here that is confirmed. It's, it's what the, her supplier has confirmed her. She asked for 10 and, the, the, and, and Prabhu said, okay, I do have 10 and I'm shipping it to you, okay? 
Uh, so that this is what uh, Prabhu is doing, and she had not ordered any any beer in the in week zero or minus one or whatever. Uh, and then there are two kinds of costs here that may appear, that, that appear: the cost of non fulfillment, which means if she she was not able to to meet my expectation, my, my order, then she would have that kind of cost, uh, or the cost of carrying inventory. The cost of non fulfillment for the sake of our game here is going to be the same number of um, money units as the the number of cases of beer that you were not able to to, to send to your customer right uh, in her case everything was fine so this is zero and the carry of costing inventory is going to be half the value of her inventory right this is arbitrary number that i chose here just to make sure sure that we had costs of carrying inventory or costs of uh, uh, of uh, not being able to fulfill an order, okay? Uh, of course, you want to try and, and, and have small numbers there. Uh, small numbers for, for the, the cost of non-fulfillment and for the cost of carrying inventory. I'll go back to, to Prabhu's uh, uh, wholesale spreadsheet here because now, now he has to take a decision. Notice that after I included there, uh, uh, or after Marian included uh, uh, her, her order there, this order will show up, which was 10, okay? This order will show up to the wholesaler here. So the wholesaler probably had 20 uh, cases of beer inventory, order was 10, so it's pretty much the same. Uh, but notice there is one extra column here. Uh, there's a column that we didn't have for the retailer, which is previously unattended orders. Why is it so? Because me as, a, a, as the, the end customer, uh, I will only take, uh, I'll go to my uh, pub and ask for beer. If she doesn't have beer, I'll go somewhere else, right? Uh, and she she can't do much about it. But if Ma when Marian uh, orders uh, beer to, to Prabhu, if Prabhu uh, cannot, uh, deliver, uh, cannot send uh, the beer immediately, he will take note of that and he will say, well, as soon as I have that in stock, I will ship it to Marian. So every other link of the supply chain, except the end customer, will be accepting orders that were made in the previous round or two rounds ago that the the supplier had not yet been able to to to, to supply okay uh, so this is why there is this column here uh, in this case there was as, as the, the game is starting now this is zero but if in previous weeks you had had troubles uh, fulfilling the orders of your, your uh, customer uh, that will. This is where you keep a track because then the expected dispatch is going to be actually the sum of this. So you notice my formula there, if you, if you wish. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, the formula there is the sum of these two: what, what the retailer ordered plus the the previously unattended uh, orders. Okay. Uh, and then this is what is was actually dispatched. Of course, what is actually dispatched is the smallest number between the initial inventory and the expected dispatch. Okay. In this case, as uh, uh, what is being expected is less than what Prabhu has in inventory, he is able to ship it and there's no problem. And then now Prabhu has to take a decision of the number of uh, cases of beer that he wants to uh, send to Selesh uh, and, and uh, Serge. Okay. Uh, by the way, you will always be in a situation of, of including your order when this, uh, there's a cell in, in, in this column I that is green. Right? So notice that right now there's a green column, a green, a green cell here. Oh, sorry, I messed up. So I just have to control Z. Uh, this is green. It means that it's Prabhu's turn. If I go to, you're not going to be hopping from one, from one tab to the other, okay? But if I go here to the distributors tab, notice that it's not green because it's not their turn yet. Uh, only after the sorry, only after the wholesaler includes a value here, will the next uh, position, the distributor's position, be in conditions of uh, of taking its own decision. Okay, probably just how much should I order here? Just to start. Maybe. Hmm? Let's have a larger number here, okay? I'll just include uh, 40. Yeah. You know why? Because I have given everyone 20 uh, cases of beer as the original uh, inventory, and we want to see what's going to happen now to the distributor. Notice, the distributor had an original inventory of 20. Prabhu's order was 40. This is a problem because it will not be fulfilled. Yeah. 
the, uh, uh, the, the, the distributors had no, no problem with previously um, unattended orders, but they were they are expected to dispatch 40, right? But they can only actually dispatch 20, uh, and they missed 20, right? This that they missed will become unattended orders in the, in the next uh, rounds, okay? And notice that the kind of cost that uh, the distributors are incurring is the cost of non-fulfillment of the delivery of 20 cases of beer. Okay. All right, uh, they will have to be careful not to, again, if, if, if in any situation you notice that you wrote anything outside the green box here, just control Z it so that uh, it doesn't mess up with the, with the game, right? Uh, so maybe here they are going to also ask for 30 and then we can go to the well, then the manufacturer uh, will have the 30 here. See, this is, when I say that we are all electronic, uh, there is this uh, kind of uh, electronic system called EDI, Electronic Data Interchange. That is what usually companies use to send um, orders to, other, to, to, to the systems of other companies with, uh, which, they are, with, with which they partner, so that the, uh, the systems of both companies work as if they were only one system, right? and, and make sure that uh, whatever one of the companies has in their system is the same as the other and, and, and that there is no because I mean of course you can you, you can send an email through an order but that will have to be process human humanly processed uh, and there is a lot of risks of error in the middle of the way uh, difference differences in interpretation I don't know humans tend to be very uh, ambiguous uh, in the way they communicate and so and in order to reduce that kind of risk companies usually try to, to be more if, if they are sophisticated in terms of technology, they, they, they try to use uh, some kind of protocol that they know that, that that's a, whatever arrived is an actual order uh, and, and it's, let's say it's a signed order so the, 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 the customer is committed with it and so on and so forth. This is done through uh, EDI. Uh, and now we got finally to uh, Ola Kundli's uh, manufacturing decision uh, spreadsheet, which is very similar this part to the to the to the left of the, the the pink column here is very similar to the to the distributor and the wholesaler. Uh, so they they have their initial inventory, they have the 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 order, their customer's order. They have what they were expected to send, what they actually are able to to to, to dispatch, uh, what they're expected, what what they actually are, are able to dispatch. The the calculation of any differences, uh, final inventory, everything up to here is the same as. The, the distributor and wholesaler, the 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 things here to this side. See, there are some hidden uh, columns here, simply because the the manufacturer is not ordering to, to anybody else. The manufacturer is ordering to its own production process. So the uh, it will still take some time for the for 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 the production to happen. Uh, but but whatever the manufacturer decides here will happen. For example, if the manufacturer decides here to produce a thousand cases of beer, uh, notice that it has nothing in process of being processed, but next week this a thousand will be being processed. And, 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 and it, takes, it takes two weeks until what the manufacturer decided to produce is ready to, to, to become part of its inventory. The same way as it takes two weeks for any order that any of in order that any of the uh, of the other players uh, place here, it takes two weeks until it it gets to to be part of their inventory. And notice here, I, I had not uh, shown that, but the distributor here, uh, the, the distributor ordered 30. And in fact, I, I didn't show this also. Let me see that the wholesaler, the wholesaler, no, the wholesaler. Uh, okay, and the, the wholesaler. Uh, yeah, I, I had not mentioned, but this had already happened here. Notice the wholesaler had asked for 40 cases of beer. And notice what came back from the distributor. The distributor is saying, I'm only sending you 20. Why? Because they have only 20. That's, that's all, all they had in stock, right? So I will erase these numbers and you will start from scratch. But you already know that for the first week of the, the game, as, as I disclosed that, I, I, I gave everyone 20 cases of beer as their stock. So if any of you ask for more than case, 20 cases of beer, you will probably have, a, you will surely have only a partial uh, delivery of, uh, of what you asked because the, your supplier only has 20. But 
that that's no problem you can see you, you can even order more than that if you want to signal to them that you need more than that for whatever reason for your strategy uh, and then they will know okay that means that I will have to ask my supplier for more also because I cannot I do not have that level of, of inventory right now okay uh, and even the manufacturer has this kind of problem because the manufacturer although the manufacturer decides how much will be produced uh, it does not get in stock immediately there's there's this this is what we call in, in business leads time the time that that goes from the time we order until the time that we can have that order fulfilled okay uh, right what I will do here I will so I will erase these numbers that I included in the only place where you are allowed it to include any anything right uh, notice that it turned green when I erase it because that means that you can place an order there and maybe we can start slowly the game until you you understand how it how it's working here. and and uh, and then after you get more used to I mean the, the game is is not all that exciting it's a decision game at each round you just have to take that decision how much do I buy considering the the amount that my customer is buying from me the only information you have in the supply chain although this is a very let's say this is a very sophisticated supply chain because each time you place an order here you know what happens when I press enter well this goes to California I mean or India I don't know where Google has its its uh, servers right and it comes back in the in the in the other well in this case it, it doesn't do all of that because it's on my computer already but uh, but let, let's uh, assume that we were doing this in different uh, each one had their own um, spreadsheet this was, was this is what would have happened right it lives here goes somewhere else comes almost instant instantaneously for human sake instantaneously but the information has traveled a long uh, a long way right? um, but it's all connected but this is the only information that we share uh, in the supply in this supply chain right this supply chain definitely does not follow Makina's idea that we should build a dialogue well there is some dialogue happening here right an order is a dialogue uh, but it's a very I mean there, there, sh there could be much more information being exchanged between partners considering that you're partners you're, right over here we, we do not have we, we only have one supply chain you're not competing against each other in fact you are competing together for the markets because if you include any any inefficiency in the process that inefficiency will cause the systems uh, cost to go higher and therefore probably uh, the need to increase the price of the beer at the pub which is no good if, if the customer uh, drinks your beer and drink the competition's beer think that they are both similar in quality and you have to increase your price because you're inefficient that's going to be uh, an incentive for the customer to start drinking more of the, the, the competition's beer okay of the competitors beer right so uh, again we'll start slowly um, uh, you may you, you may be arguing okay if you're, if you're being sophisticated in the sense that we are using all this technology that allows information to go instantaneously from one place to the other and that we are organizing our supply chain here in a way that it's almost like if we were all in the same room pretend that we, we weren't because we could be right we could be each one of us in a in a different continent and we could still play this game so we could be each one in a different con continent and still be part of the supply chain right uh, so we have a lot of technology in allowing this info this information flow to happen but the only information that is flowing is our order this is why you only have one cell one green cell at a time you decide that and you communicate that to your to your uh, supplier right the only thing uh, you may ask uh, is this uh, something that reflects what happens uh, in the markets well some markets have uh, share more information than that than that but there are, there are also markets that only the only information that each of the of the links in a supply chain have is exactly that you know the customers orders and then they have to try and understand what's happening simply based on those customer orders that they receive so we're simulating a situation in which we are very um, uh, economical in terms of the information that we're sharing and later on we'll discuss if this is enough or, or not for a good uh, 
performance in, in, the, in the game. Okay. okay, so Maria, you can already place your first order. And when you place your order, uh, you can already, you, you can tell the, the, your, let's say, your supplier. There's an order there. This, this will, I, I will allow here to, just so, so that we are a little faster in uh, doing this. So there's an order there for you, uh, Prabhu. And, okay, and now you have to decide what you're doing. Uh, and uh, one thing that we, we, you will notice is that when, when it's there, maybe it's ready for you to take another one, but they are still waiting for, for Prabhu's. So take your, uh, do your, yeah, take I your receipt. I need to give you 40. Pardon? 40. Write it there. No. No. Oh, the control Z, control Z, whatever you've done, you always only write on the col on column I. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. And now uh, we have the distributors to, to play. Remember, you don't see what the others are doing, right? This is part of the game. Okay. You only so you don't start changing tabs. You you keep to your own tab. Okay. But whenever it's green, it means that you can take another decision. Uh, and then, uh, and it may be green for two of you at the same time because sometimes when, when one of the links has already sent uh, uh, a message to the supplier, it also sends a message to the, to the customer. It's better to be conservative at least at the beginning of the game so that you understand. But remember that whatever you order, it will take two weeks until it becomes part of your own inventory. So you have to order. If you want it to arrive somewhere in the, the future. Okay, maybe I will. I'm waiting for the price. I'm waiting for the price. There's no price. Your, your, your only decision is, is uh, how much you. The quantity. The quantity. We, we only talk about quantity here. Okay. The, let's say the price is a fixed variable for us just to make the, the game a little simpler. <laughs> All right, guys, we're, uh, I, I believe we are around uh, week. Uh, what week? 40. 40, yeah. 40. That's that's good. So let's uh, let's do the following. Uh, before b before I show you some some numbers here, and I don't want you to see other people's uh, spreadsheets yet. Before we we, we we analyze this, I would uh, like to ask Olakumi, um, how do you think if you had to describe my demand here as the End consumer, the, the consumer, or the end customer. How do you, how would you qualify it from the the information that you got, or from what, what is your impression? How 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 do you think that uh, I behaved as a uh, the, customer? Yeah, um, the demand is not is not uh, linear. It's like it's constant. It's oh. not, it's not consistent. consistent. Consistent or okay, so there's no pattern. Uh, there is no pattern. Let me ask you one thing. What was the smallest and the largest amount that you produced? The largest I produced is 700. 700? And the minimum? Zero? Zero. Okay. Let's come one, one step closer to the end uh, customer here and see what the distributors, what is your impression about my demand? Was not, uh, stable. You have the same impression uh, that it's fluctuating. fluctuating. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, uh, what was the minimum and the maximum order that you placed to the manufacturer? Minimum order, maximum order. Zero to 550. All right. 550, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to, the, to our wholesalers. What is your impression about my, my behavior as a customer? It's not profitable. <laughs> you don't know if it's profitable or not. You only have the cost there. You, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're selling this beer for, you know, it's, it's a very unique beer that you sell for $100 a bottle. It's inconsistent. Like sometimes the demand is too much. Retailer is asking for the demand. Again, retailer is not asking for the demand. Supply. So there's a fluctuation happening. It's not there's a lot of fluctuation. So my money is getting lost. <laughs> All right, your money. I don't know if it's your money. It depends on. It could be even the customer's money because you waste the money and then you you consider that as part of the cost, and the the consumer has to pay the bill. Uh, what was the minimum and the ma maximum amount zero, zero was the minimum, was the maximum. that you ordered to the distributor? Zero to four hundred. Yeah. Marian, I will ask you something slightly different. What was the minimum and the maximum that you you ordered to the wholesaler? Uh, 
I will not ask her what she, uh, how, how she perceived my my behavior as a consumer for now. Yeah. Let's wait a little longer before we get to that. But can you see uh, any pattern there? I mean, uh, the retailer says that uh, the well, well, it's not what they what you say; it's what happened. The retailer ordered from zero to thirty. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you, based on those orders, <laughs> you uh, uh, wholesalers decided you're going to. Sometimes I got uh, more, so I can put in inventory. And don't try to explain. It's, <laughs> don't try to explain because it's unexplainable. Yeah. But but it, it, but it's still interesting that she ordered you from zero to thirty, and you ordered from zero to four hundred. Yeah. Four hundred is. Well, almost 10 times more, more than 10 times more than what she ordered you. Was this, was this already when the Chinese Indian connection started working together there that you decided to, to place a 400 order? Yeah, because population is small. Wei, I don't know why you came to class today. I definitely think that Wei only came to mess up with our. And now he's pretending that, he's, that we're not talking to him. <laughs> See? There's a good way of this guy. <laughs> He is. No, he is. Oh, of course, I'm only, I'm only joking. Guys. You're... Oh, Jerry, I don't know how. What is the number ratio? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just. You, you know, I'm kidding with you. You know, when I'm, I'm playing here, but of course, the, because this is a game, I, I feel that we can be. In, and of course, we are in a classroom. Uh, if we were in a, in a, in a company environment, and if I were doing the kind of jokes that I'm doing with you here, you could say that that's harassment or whatever. You know, uh, but here it's just learning. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm doing this yeah, in a very, hopefully, in a very respectful way. You know, I'm joking with you, I'm, I'm, uh, in a, but it's, it's in a respectful way, simply because it seems amusing. Uh, but, but don't worry, it's amusing. But you know, this game, it always happens like that. Since, I, I, in fact, I didn't tell you where they started. The first time that, the time that this game, this game was conceived by Professor Forrester at the MIT in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. So it has been played by, you know, uh, generations of not only students. Not only MBA students, but uh, and well, not not only master students, but a lot of MBA students that are the masters in business who should be even better than, than you at this. And we all fail because the game is organized in a way that it already promotes failure, right? It's just that you accepted the. the no, we, we can find this game. Analysis. Yeah, you can. If you if you look for the beer game, you will see that there are there are different. It's not going to be exactly like my version here, but but it will be similar to this. Uh, so notice that there was, the pattern was a pattern of amplification. 30, 400, 550, 700. There is this uh, uh, Chinese professor at Stanford, uh, Hao Li, his name. Yeah, well, I remember that once, many years ago, I saw one of his, he, he coming in, into a, a class. He was a sort of small, bulky Chinese, and he came in with a whip, you know, like a whip, a, a bull whip. He came into the class with the bull whip, mm -hmm. and what he, the, the class that he was teaching that day was uh, uh, how to try and avoid what he called the bull whip effect. The bull whip effect is what is happening here, right? Why, why, why they call it a bull whip effect? Well, now I'll use this in a better way than. Okay, I have the whip here. A little movement of my hands causes a much broader movement of the other, the other side of the, the bull whip. Okay, uh, we never think that an HDMI cable is going to turn into a bull whip, but the idea is that uh, notice we have a bull whip effect here. <coughs> a smaller variance here at the retail causes a huge variance. It's it's variance in in, in, in the decision that is that is being taken, but it's it's a variance in volumes. It's a variance in costs. It's a, it, it makes that uncertainty. The furthest away we are from the, the end customer, uh, the worse it gets. Now, Maria, what was your impression about my uh, my pattern of consumption? Uh, actually, it was stable. The, your order was stable as a customer, as an end customer. But I predict what I predicted before that maybe sometimes because uh, it was always thin. Mm -hmm. But I predicted sometimes there would be uh, twenty sometimes. Or right. More. So I uh, so ordered more than. Uh, but but uh, even Marian doesn't know the customer need. Well, the retailer has a direct contact with the customer. The customer buys directly from her. All my purchases for all the 30-something 30, 30 weeks, it was always 10. 
10, fixed, right? How does 10 turns into 30? Notice that there was already, the bull whip effect was already happening here. Notice from 10 to 30 to 400 to 550 to 700, right? Uh, the reason it happens, it is because the furthest away you are from, from the end customer, the more uncertainty there, there is, the more need to predict there is. Uh, this, this word is very important. Uh, Mariam needed to predict, to forecast, and, and forecasting means trying to uh, guess the future. And whenever we guess anything, there is risk. We never, I mean, we, we're not, we're not, we cannot be sure about the future. Right? So whenever we include our guess, we include risk, we include mistake, and we include this possibility of amplifying the mistake along the supply chain. Right? Let's have a look at the, the numbers we've got here, uh, turned into some graphs. Let me see if I can show you. So see here that uh, the end customer, oh, the, oh of course. This, this is a bull whip. A bull whip doesn't work as an H, HDMI cable unless we plug it. And not even after we plug it, I think. <laughs> Have I burned the thing? <laughs> well, the cable now is. Do we need uh, that Ola Kunli do some trick over there <laughs> to make sure that? The other side of the cable works. No. Does it? Oh, hang on. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, good. Thank you very much. So notice here, uh, me as an end customer, trying to be well, not trying to be, being very stable. Exactly the opposite as of what you felt. Right? Very stable demand. In fact, a demand that you will never find in the market. Yeah. I think that if we I usually. That, that I predicted there's mm -hmm. another number here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and, and this uncertainty that always exists in the market is the reason for speculation. Uh, and speculation gets amplified as we have too many levels in our, in our supply chain. So, one of the first things that we could think of as information systems people or people that are dealing with, with uh, technology that can bring um, the supply chain closer, uh, one thing that one first and very easy thing to reduce the, the, this problem of amplification, the, the bull whip effect uh, is, uh, or, or forester effect as it is also called, uh, is uh, to reduce the, the number of, uh, of links in the supply chain. So many times when you see a, a company or a supply chain that is saying, we're trying to reduce the middleman, we're trying to reduce uh, companies or people in the middle, they're trying to, be, to, to, to turn the, 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 their, let's say, the, their network uh, smoother. Okay. Remember uh, uh, Mr. Venkatraman's idea about, about redesigning, the, redesigning the network? Right? Uh, think the way, for example, Nike redesigns, sorry, not Nike, uh, think the way uh, Dell redesigns the, the, the network that is necessary for selling computers, for example. IBM and Compaq and HP, they all had, this, they, they all had uh, at least a retailer in the middle of the way between them and the, the end customer. Dell goes there and says, I will sell direct. Do you think that uh, if Ola Kunli could sell his beer directly to me, he would still produce 700 cases of, of a beer a week, knowing that the customer only wants 10? That's two year, more than two years of, uh, of production there, right? No. So would it be acceptable that we change the, the, the value chain of, uh, of, the beer, of our beer making process here so that it looked a little bit more like Dell's model of direct sales? Probably yes, although, of course, those of you who know a little more about uh, beer producing will say, well, look, we, we have to produce beer where there is good water. Uh, and that's not necessarily close to the, the end customer. Sometimes it's closer to the mountain, further away. Uh, so it's not always possible to sell. And, and we, yeah, I guess you haven't seen many uh, beer companies selling beer through the web, right? Directly to the end consumers. It's not very usual. Uh, you, you may see some, someone selling very, uh, some art, art craft beer, very sophisticated beer, but I mean, beer for general consumption needs 
the, the regular, the traditional supply chain, because the supply chain is, is important. It adds value breaking large volumes into smaller volumes. It adds value making sure that the, the beer is closer to where each customer is, so capillarity of, uh, of the distrib distribution and so on and so forth. Okay, but anyway, uh, so let's, let's check here the graphs that I prepared for this. Uh, no, not that. Let's see what we have here for orders placed. Oh no, not that. I want the graph, orders, graph. Look at the bullwhip effect here. Uh, and notice that, uh, well, we have the end customer in, in, in blue, light blue, the retailer in red, the wholesaler in orange, the distributor in green, and the manufacturer in, in purple. The graph that you produced was actually very pedagogical because it shows exactly how the bullwhip effect happens in theory with the manufacturer, uh, whoever is further away from, from the, the end customer, being more affected. Notice how, how the bullwhip, uh, bullwhip effect affects the, the manufacturer. Uh, the distributor that is the second level that is further uh, away as being the, the second most affected. Uh, and then uh, the wholesaler. And then the, notice that the retailer didn't do very bad. It was always very close to what happened to the, to the end customer. But this is not necessarily because Maria is so much smarter than you. It's, it's, it's because she, she was closer to, to, to the end customer. And whoever were in this position would already have uh, the, uh, the tendency to, to, to take less risk. What, what was the word that you used? To, to, to have to predict less. There's less prediction when you have to predict what a consumer that you see that has, of course, at the beginning of the game, she didn't know how regular I, I would be, but after a few rounds, she already knew, well, it's sort of regular. Uh, and anyway, she only had to predict for two weeks, right? Because whatever she ordered, two weeks later, uh, it would, uh, she, she would be, well, well uh, uh, whatever she was demanded, uh, uh, well, she, she had to have um, beer to, to, to give straight away, but whatever she ordered uh, in two weeks' time uh, would be with her, of course, if the other, uh, if the other links in the supply chain were minimally well stocked, um, and, and and this is not uh, th th this is not not the case with uh, others. For example, if uh, uh, Ola Kunli had to f predict the the my, my you know what what was going to happen here with me, he would have to predict what two, four, six, eight weeks in advance. Is Alex going to drink beer eight weeks from now? Is it going to be hot or cold outside? Uh, is he ha going to have money in his pocket or not? It's much easier to predict when you're closer. Not only closer physically, that's not necessarily, but at least closer in time, uh, right? Um, so this, this is an, an, an inter interesting pattern here. And this, this was the orders. Let's see what happens with the inventory. Notice here, uh, in this case, uh, still very pedagogical because we still have the manufacturer, you know, having a lot of uh, stock here. But after a while, this stock ended up uh, going to the hands of the wholesaler. So the wholesaler, the, the manufacturer could be happy saying, well, part of my costs I transferred to the wholesalers who ended up overstocked, yeah. right? Uh, but, you know, uh, it, it may seem that, well, I, trans I transferred part of my, my, my cost to the, to the wholesaler, but think again, who pays for the bill when we're talking about beer? The customer, right? So if there are costs there or costs there, it doesn't matter. All those costs will, will be transferred to the customer if the customer is willing to pay because the customer may always, in a competitive market, the customer may always find, uh, uh, I would say, uh, find alternatives, find, find other suppliers that are more efficient in, in their, in their work, right? Uh, let me see if I have here the real numbers, your real numbers. Uh, I did have orders, uh, chain, chain performance, I think this is it. Look at this. Uh, notice that the cost of carrying inventory, uh, it increased a lot. And, and, and notice why the wholesaler had a high, a high cost here, because they kept most of that, that, that inventory for the last few half of the game right uh, so it, it was uh, the, the but uh, it, it's better to, to get the, the, the overall cost 
uh, and notice that the overall cost of the, the operation here, the retailer had the smallest cost. And then here we had this, the, 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 the reason why the wholesaler had such high cost was because they were overstocked for, for very long. Okay. Uh, otherwise, here we are not that pedagogical in the sense that usually the bullwhip effect would say probably the, the retailer would have the lowest costs and then, and then the wholesaler and then the distributor and then the manufacturer because whoever is further, so, uh, further away will have, again, less uh, possibility of understanding uh, what's happening in the market. But, but this shows uh, that there is... Uh, that, that we do have uh, uh, an issue here in the way we, we dealt with this game. If I propose you to play the game again, what would you do differently? Sir, we know that the order is going to come at 10-10 uh, only. So, no, 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 no. I don't think... Order. Yeah? Yeah, you know, now, now you know the market. Yeah, now I you know the market. It is always going to come 10. So, C is going to order maximum of 30 or 20. Maximum. Let's try that for only 10 minutes. You already know, you all know uh, what, what, what is. I'll, I'll go back here. What, what I'll do is, well, I, let, let, me, let me just, uh, I'll get a copy of this because I want you to have this uh, so you can examine it later. Uh, so I will not mess up with the, with the game that we just played. I will just uh, include what's happening here. Why is this? I just want to make a copy of it very quickly. All right, now I have a beer game, no prediction uh, there. Uh, what you can, uh, what, what you, you, will, you will play the same role as you were playing. So Marianne will still be yellow here, the retailer. You guys there, the wholesaler, distributor and manufacturer. Uh, but you already know that my, that me as the end customer always will always play 10, right? Try to, and we'll do this only until round 10 or so. <laughs> Try to do the best you can. Start, start there, Maria, and, okay. and let's see how but it will go. Actually, I have a question because yeah. here uh, we already have just 10 mm -hmm. in the inventory. And if I uh, order now, I have, to, uh, I have to wait two weeks. Well, maybe let's discuss this together. What, what, what is the best idea? And let, let's do not, not only play, but we'll play all together. So, so we'll, we'll make sure that there's more information happening along the supply chain. So everyone will, is working together. How, can she, how should she deal with that? She, she started the week with 20. I asked for 10. Uh, uh, so she served with, with 10. She, she, she missed no sales. She has 10 in stock. How many should she ask here? Zero. She, if she asks zero... It will two take weeks. two weeks, but but you still have ten for next week. Exactly. If you have zero, you won't be able to deliver. How much should you have here? You know what the Japanese do in their Kanban uh, system? Have you heard of Kanban? No. no. Have never heard of Kanban? Kanban. No. Like, Jira. like what? Jira. I don't know what Jira is, uh, but well, Kanban is a technique that the Japanese uh, use in their manufacturing plants. You know, uh, Toyota was the leader company. In fact, it, it taught the world how to do that. It is, I only build what I've been ordered. So yes. what about going for 10 here? Let's let's go for 10. Okay, the customer asked for 10, I will. No, uh, yes, my strategy will be I will order all of the, uh, all weeks I will order just 10. Yeah, if you order all, always 10, you know why? What the beauty of uh, Kanban is if you order 10, they will know that you want 10, so you, you, you didn't transfer misinformation to the next uh, to the next link. You know, when you were doing your opti when you were trying to optimize your decisions, you were doing what we usually call local optimization. You were trying to make sure that you got the lowest numbers possible. But for you to get the lowest, uh, to, or for you to not not even to get, for you to try and get the lowest numbers possible you were imposing a situation to the rest of the supply chain that maybe they would not get the lowest possible themselves. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, you were opti optimizing locally 
and that was causing others to optimize less efficiently. So let's go for 10 here. Is, is that way? I, I believe that's, that's way. I think he is. is. Let's, let's go for 10 here. Okay? Uh, and then uh, the wholesalers there. Let, let's all do that. Put 10 there, wholesalers. And in fact, we can be faster than that. Everyone puts 10. You know, we can do, we can do faster than that. We, we can cheat here. And, and this time we can play before because we already know. We just put 10 uh, in all yes, of them uh, until. Yes, this, uh, this, this is the case I'm talking about. Uh, I, I, I have already get one missed. Uh, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, let, let's see what will happen. Put, put 10 in, in the, your, other, your other guys. Just put 10 in yours until uh, week 10. Until week 10. It's always the the in in in, in this yeah ten until the until week ten. Okay. <coughs> All right. So now, what we have here, we have ten uh, included for every one of the players. Oh, but we missed the sale three times here. Yeah. No problem. Check, but check the cost. We're, we're talking, remember that we were... You, you, you say you missed uh, three times here. Yeah. Uh, and, and besides, maybe what, what we could do if we wanted to really figure out, maybe we could have started with... But the problem is that we start differently to, to what... Uh, the problem is that if we don't use Kanban, Maria, you would say, okay, I could go perfect here. I could, I, I could do better than this if I had included maybe, uh, where, where did that happen? I have missed uh, sales here. Maybe in, in one of these I would have to have asked 20, 20 yeah. right? Yeah. But the problem is that if I include 20 here, I signal something to the other link that is, I mean, you are going to, to do better, but all the other links are going to do worse. Yeah. So, but we can start at the starting. We can go for home, and when when we are seeing that it is ten, 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 then we, we can always order ten. So our stock will be all also managed. You you could I mean we, we could do that. That's the beauty about strategy, right? You can do what we we can do whatever we want, yeah. and uh, and we'll have to cope with the consequences afterwards. Uh, my argument here for not even because what, what Marian is suggesting is look there are three situations here in which we were missing uh, but you can make it better because there's a there's an order in the there is a pattern yeah, yeah. so but but no again my argument let's try and make it better but before we, we make it better let's have a look at our graphs here okay let me just show you the graphs the way it is look at the orders graph it's flat at 10 for everyone this is why i mean we only see the cinema manufacturer because they're all one on top of the other uh if you look at the the, the overall cost oh, let, let's see the where is the perf chain performance look here the costs cost of carrying inventory Cost of non fulfillment, uh, overall cost. So, this is a possibility. Let, let's see, uh, I'll just include here, the, I'll just get for the overall cost here. I'll include. Is this all this is in Portuguese? So, <coughs> I don't know why Microsoft has its commands in specific link. Okay, I included here. I don't know what this is. But. I included here the overall cost, repeating cost of repeating 10. Okay, now we'll try to improve it better. So, this is the overall cost of the system. Again, we're not concerned with local optimization, we're now concerned about system optimization. And now we will try and do the tweaks that, uh, that Marian is suggesting. If I can get back there. Manufacturer, where are the others? Okay. 
uh, this does not exist. Uh, so you think that we should do something? Yes, maybe it's two times we, we have to order 20. For example, 20, 10, 10, 20, 20. 20 here? Would 20 here be, be good? Like, well, let's try and see. Mm, did not solve the problem, right? No, thanks. It has to be the first one. Here, you mean? Yes. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Let me. Here, 20. Did we solve the problem? No, I mean 20, and then. Come on, guys. Let's let's think together. Let's see if we can improve this. The idea is to have final stock. Uh, sorry. Uh, how come that's twenty twenty? Any any ideas of how to improve this? Twenty ten, twenty here again. Here, but we ha we already had a problem here. Those. Well, th th there is uh, what I want to say. We can still, for sure, improve the quality of uh, the result here of the, the the retailer, but it's local optimization again. And local optimization, whatever whatever we do here of uh, figuring out a way of uh, uh, preventing these missed sales here means we are increasing or decreasing our order in a different fashion than what happens with the customer's demand. So we are signaling to the other, to the rest of the, the supply chain something that is not happening. <coughs> so even if we improve, they will do worse, right? So this is why I don't want to go uh, any different than doing the Japanese Kanban everyone does if, if, if you have an order of one, that's what you're going to produce. And that gives everyone the the, the right idea uh, about it. Notice that if, if we had played this game this way, if I had told you, if I told if I had told each one of you, you know, the game is really boring, but that, this is what we're going to do. If you get an order of 10, you order 10. If you get an order of 15, you order 15. If you get an order of 100, you order 100. And then everyone in the, the, the value chain will know during that, let's say that week, they will know the demand of the end customer that week specifically, right? We could have done that, and, and, and we would get to this beautiful situation in which our cost is 410, the total cost, with much less thinking, right? Uh, then uh, what we had here, which was, what was the overall cost here? What happened? 28,000. See the difference? 410, 28,000. Uh, of course, we played for only 10 rounds. You had played for 30 something. So multiply this by, by three or four, and still it's it's much less. Uh, so things that, uh, well, le lessons that, that, that we can learn from this. <coughs> lessons that we can learn from this game. There are things that we can do with information systems that go beyond simply connecting uh, suppliers and, and customers. We, you were all connected. Nobody could complain about the speed of the transmission of data. Uh, but we were not focusing on transmitting the right data. Of course, the order itself is a, a very important uh, piece of data. But it should be followed by other information. That, or Not that it should, but it could. That would help you take better decisions. For example, and, and, and here again, uh, Ola Kunli, uh, as, a, as a manufacturer, that week that you decided it, that you were going to produce 700 cases of beer, if you had there flashing on your screen, the end user only wants 10, would you still manufacture 700? No. Do we have any technological issue, any technological problem in making uh, that happen, making it it's so that uh, that our manufacturer could know what the customer, the end customer, is is ordering. For example, the way we, we the, the way this pro, the, the, this was set, right? Only uh, Maria uh, knew my orders. But what if I just did this? Control C. I hope it works here. But and went there to the manufacturer, 
and decide to include an, an extra column here. Control. Will this work? I don't know. Maybe not. This is not the way I can do it. Or I can. No. But anyway, I, I could come here and say, well, what I want here is this. This. Okay. And what about this? What technical technical difficulty we had to include this extra column to our system? Not right. Very very little. Okay. So why don't we do it? Now this is this is, this is not a rhetoric question here. I'm asking why don't we do it? Why do don't we when we build systems? Why don't we provide the information that will be good for and maybe I would even do it like here no, I would include a column next to are you going to decide this this is what the end customer is ordering what is the difficulty in doing that technically not but I would say it's almost impossible to have this done in the field because this information here is Marianne's competitive information in the market she uses this information that she has about the, the end customer to get a better deal with the with the wholesaler, she knows when. In this case, she, she knows that my 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 orders are flat, but she she being clo so close to the, the end customer, she could also know uh, that I drink more beer in summer, or more that I drink more beer in winter, or that I drink more beer on the weekend, or whatever. She's close to me. Uh, you don't know that, so she uses she can she she thinks that she can use that to get a better to get advantage to to optimize locally. Over here, we were only discussing costs. But of course, there's also uh, other uh, uh, issues involved. And, and, and for example, we could be talking about price. She could go to, to, to the wholesaler and say, oh, I'm sorry, my customers are not uh, willing to, they, they don't see that they want beer right now. Um, so maybe I will stop buying beer from you for a while. Or maybe if you, if you wish to, trust, to to share risks or whatever, I could buy, if you give me a good discount, I could even buy a little longer because I think that later in the year, maybe they buy. I don't know. She, she, she could even try to, to turn things even more confusing for the other links, because if she's thinking to optimize, if she's optimizing locally, she doesn't care that you're losing money or that, 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 that and that she will end up losing money because the customer is buying the, the efforts of everyone. Right? So understand that uh, this is uh, you know sharing information means sharing uh, or, or means distributing power, and organizations do not usually like to do that at least when they consider that they're competing against their own supply chain, uh, the other supply chains. And they are comp they are always thinking that they're competing at least for the money that is available for the, for all the participants, right? So they're, of course, they'd say we're partners, but we're com competing for the share of the value that each one of us will, will get. And if we have that kind of mentality, uh, we will not never be able to, although systems allow companies to work much better together than in the past, we will still not benefit from well, we'll, we'll still not, not get the real benefits from from from, uh, from what the, the, the technology can provide us with. So, if it's difficult to to convince uh, Mariam to share this data with you, what could you offer her in exchange for this information? Hmm? Right. One thing that you could say is, let's all sit at the table and discuss together how we're going to split the pizza. Let's say we'll, we'll get some money here as a, a value chain and decide how we're going to split. But we are going to work together, right? Uh, if, if you're convinced that the beer game idea here, that there is a forester effect and, and that you can do better if you work together, if you believe on the power of thinking the whole supply chain with the view of the ego and not the view of the, all the little ants, uh, you should, uh, that's one uh, first approach, build trust among the, 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 the participants of the supply chain and then discuss this openly. Right? Other things that you could do, for example, um, um, Ola Kunle could, uh, uh, could, 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 could establish an arrangement directly with uh, Maria and say, you know, we don't need the distributor and the, and the wholesaler any longer. I prefer to sell directly to you because then the information that you, you send to me is less affected by the bullwhip effect. Again, uh, theoretically possible, difficult to implement because uh, if, if our distributors and, and, and wholesalers here are very involved in the process that the company has today uh, and we decide to change it, of course, our change will start slowly. 
And uh, the business that used to go through those uh, traditional channels may be interrupted abruptly. So it may not be easy to cut some of the links out. Right? Dell was able to do that in the computer business simply because Dell had never worked with wholesalers and distributors. So it could start a business dealing directly with the, the not even the retailers. They, they skipped everyone and, well, Dell is actually not a manufacturer, it's an assembler. So Dell would probably be the second level. It's almost like if it was the distributor there, right? It does more than a distributor because uh, in addition to simply moving things around, an assembler also puts pieces together, puts modules together, but it's still not the, the last link. But Dell decided, I don't want to have any links between me and the end customer because I want to know if the end customer is, is regular on, on, on orders, or I want to simply know better. I want to build that dialogue uh, that Makina was talking about with the end customer. Uh, so that's a, but but that's another possibility. Reduce the the the, the middleman. Reduce the number of uh, middlemen. Uh, what else can can we can we do? Uh, some companies what they do is part. Yeah, but but surveys are, are costly, right? As a service, uh, of course, it's the, the uh, to market research costs. Building the dialogue costs less, but, but to build it, you can improve your forecasting, but notice you can improve the forecasting, but you can also try and eliminate the forecasting or reduce the forecasting, right? I think you should do both. We, we can have technology to improve the forecasting, but before improving the forecasting, we should think, do we need, how much forecasting do we really need? Or how much of the uncertainty can I eliminate if I, if I work in a different uh, fashion? Well, uh, the beer game, as you've seen, it's uh, something that is played a lot in business schools for obvious reasons. Uh, there is some, s s some of the, I mean, the decisions that we are taking there are decisions that probably business people would take. But I always find it interesting to discuss it with uh, compu computer scientists and to other people that build the systems that uh, organizations have, because I do think that... Uh, we can use systems to improve the way things happen. Um, I, I, I told you, it's, it's difficult, for example, for companies to change the way that they work. Uh, and that makes it sometimes almost uh, well, very, very difficult for them to restructure or to, to reorganize, uh, their, their, you know, their, their, reorganize the way they do things. But technology can be used to force restructuring sometimes. Okay, so technology is uh, a means of getting change done, getting a specific uh, kind of uh, change uh, done. Uh, and, uh, and this is the kind of change that may be required many times. But, uh, of course, you, you need things, for example, like the, the bosses of, we had four companies here, let's say, playing the game. Uh, the bosses have to be convinced that, it's, that they can do better working together than, 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 than separately. Uh, and then we have to start thinking how we put the systems to, to, to do that. Again, technically, it's not difficult. I just showed you. It's, in our case here, it was just copying a column of uh, one spreadsheet to the other, and we already have uh, relevant information being shared. Okay? Uh, but again, the, the technical part of it is the, the simplest. Uh, we usually, because of the change that is required in the, in the organization or in the organizations themselves, uh, this becomes a little trickier. I've seen, for example, companies, uh, when they want to get that important information that only the retailer has, companies sometimes, the manufacturer, for example, goes to the, the retailer and says, look, I can make sure that uh, you have all the, inf the technological infrastructure that you need. You don't have to, to concern, you don't have to worry about your computer, your connection to the internet, all of that will be paid by me. In fact, even the system that you will use to sell products will be paid by me, the manufacturer, for example. Uh, and then the retailer is going to say, okay, but what is there? Uh, wh why are you inter so interested in giving me stuff? Uh, then the manuf manufacturer says, because I'm interested in the information that you're including there. So you use my system, my computers, uh, to, to organize your business. But uh, by doing that, that information that you have there will be immediately sent to me as well. So this is a way, for example, that I, in Brazil we have this I'm not sure if uh, you have here in France, probably not. I know that they have it in, in, in Portugal. O Boticario, have you heard of that? No, sir. Uh, o is a perfume manufacturer. Let me just find here. Uh, well, it's going to be in Portuguese. I don't know if, uh, but anyway, they, they produce this kind of stuff, right? Perfume and, and things like that. And they, 
and they, of course, they have uh, uh, shops in in Brazil. I would say in almost all, almost any shopping center. Uh, I know uh, they, they, they probably have some some. They, they probably have a store in Paris or something. Uh, in their case, probably more, uh, so that they can say we have a store uh, in, in Paris, and, and their big business is still Brazil. They do have a, a few shops elsewhere in the world, but the thing is, they sell uh, cosmetics and, and products like that, and they have this problem of. Uh, what was the word it used? Predicting, predicting what products would sell in the market. Uh, a few years ago, they decided that whoever has a shop that sells uh, and, and they usually they're usually spe specialized shops, so it's people that only sell their like uh, what they call uh, franchise, so they only sell uh, these brands. Uh, they would put their own computers there, and what happens now? If I get into a shop and want to buy, let's say this. I don't know what this is. This, well, this one seems to be a perfume. If I want to, to buy uh, a perfume, as soon as uh, you know uh, the the attendee types in the, the order, it will already show to Boticário at their factory, at their manufacturing plant. To the I have to go away from this because it's it's too flashy. So it keeps changing too fast. <laughs> uh, sorry, um, and um, and so the the manufacturing plant manager gets real-time information or almost real-time information about all products that are, that are being sold anywhere in the world from Obuchikai. And based on that information that, that uh, this person gets, they decide what they're going to produce next. So it is in fact the same as uh, we are here uh, providing uh, Ola Kunli with, uh, with uh, uh, Marianne's uh, uh, web sheet. Uh, column, right? They do, uh, the, the, the manager of uh, Boticario has information that allows him or her, I don't know if that manager is a male or a female, but allows that person to make decisions without having to predict, or without having to predict much. Of course, there's always, there is, uh, they want to know what people are buying, but they, they also want to push new trends into people, uh, so there, there is some prediction, there, there's always some prediction in, in business, otherwise, business is a risky thing. If there is no prediction, uh, then that probably isn't uh, any business to, to, to be done. But anyway, it reduces that. And they, they have not had any complaint by those uh, who, who use their systems, simply because they're giving something in exchange. Uh, supermarkets. Supermarkets, uh, uh, I'm sure that you've already noticed that those attendees that are, that are organizing the products on the shelves of a supermarket, they are not workers for that supermarket. Do you know that? Most times, they work for the manufacturer. So, for example, Nestlé will have at least for major uh, supermarkets. Uh, Nestlé will have uh, this the Swiss uh, uh, foods company will have someone in uh, a specific that, that will be in charge of uh, making sure that they replenish uh, the, the the shelves of a specific supermarket. Of course, when they do that, they put one of their people inside the supermarket. They, they assume for themselves a cost that traditionally was a cost of the supermarket, right? In the past, the supermarket would have to go to the supplier, buy the materials, and then uh, feed the, all, all the, the, the shelves. Uh, now, the, 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 the supplier, in this case the manufacturer, uh, undertakes the cost of having someone uh, there doing that uh, job because they, want, they need that information. Are my products selling? At what rate are my products selling? Which products are selling? When are they selling? Uh, is this a product that people prefer to, to, to buy in summer or in winter? If they work the traditional way, if they worked uh, the traditional way, they, they would have the, uh, the retailer doing all this strategizing. And they want to do it themselves. They think that that's important to their business. Uh, but why do supermarkets allow them to do that? Simply because that makes it cheaper for the supermarket and simpler. In fact, uh, a company like Nestle will tell the, the supermarket owner, look, you don't have to concern about stocks. Don't worry about inventory, right? I will, I, I, I will know all about the inventory that I have in, in, your, in your shop and you will only pay me whatever, you, you, you'll pay me for whatever goes through the, the cashier, right? Uh, is there a simpler way for someone to organize their own business? They don't care about what they will have to pay uh, Nestle, for example, and they will only pay for whatever gets out of the cashier. 
if if anyone eats a candy bar a Nestlé candy bar inside the supermarket that's not going to be uh, charged to the to the supermarket because the supermarket never even knew that that candy bar was inside its premises it's an interesting way of uh, uh, looking at this right and it's a way that was thought of to reduce the bullwhip effect uh, in fact the 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 manufacturers call that VMI, Vendor Managed Inventory, or stock that is managed by the supplier directly. Man VMI, Vendor Managed Inventory. Uh, uh, we, we, I mean, we, we can think of a vendor managed inventory that does not involve technology, but uh, it's much less feasible, right? Today, when, when you have someone from Nestlé at the shop, this person has their cell, cell phone with them and with their cell phone they're telling Nestle all the time and, and they're not talking to they're, they're not phoning Nestle they're just uh, uh, ordering new products uh, based on what they see that is not uh, available on the shelves any longer or directly from the, 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 the directly from the database of the supermarkets when they know that products uh, went through the cashier that means that new products have to, to come in uh, the well this this this, this beer game has been uh, conducted as i told you many times uh, in many places uh, and that guy i told you about this uh, japanese professor hao li the one with the bullwhip effect wrote a paper in 1997 so it's in which he tried to explain what happened here let's have a look at, at his graphs and see if you see any similarity to what happened with us here. Look there. An increasing vari var variability uh, of orders uh, up the supply chain. Right? Uh, this would be the customer's sales. This would be the retailer's orders. Uh, this is actually, there's a mistake here. It's this, this is the retailer's orders to the wholesaler. Okay, so retailer to the wholesaler. Then wholesaler to the manufacturer. And in this case, they had a, a, another uh, layer that we did not, that is the manufacturer ordering to the supplier. Our manufacturer here uh, brewed beer from, I mean, he didn't have to concern about materials or raw materials. Uh, all the materials that, they, uh, that he needed uh, were available directly to him, right? But in this case here, they included another layer. They reduced the, what they don't have here. The, the, they have retailer retailer, wholesaler, manufacturer, they don't have a distributor here, but then they have another level after the manufacturer that, that is the, the supplier of the manufacturer. But look, uh, the way I, I presented you with the, those graphs, I put one on top of the other, uh, but notice that the bullweep effect happens exactly the same way here. The furthest away you are from the customer, the more affected you are by the bullweep effect. Hao Li, the, this, uh, the author of this paper, he's not, again, he's not a computer scientist is not even information systems his concern was was with logistics he was in the operations uh, department of Stanford uh, and so most of the, the this paper is not uh, it was not written for us but I still recommend it it's in, in it's in our references there I recommend that you have a look at this paper because it's it, it, it explains the bullweep effect and again the bullweep effect is something that if you can help your organizations uh, you know, improve their, their, their improve their performance performance based on sharing the right information uh, or attracting your customers or suppliers to share their information with you. Uh, you will improve the way the, the organization works. As this guy was not uh, information systems, his concerns are mainly with uh, things that uh, are dealt by the. I can't, I can't uh, highlight here, but are dealt with by the, by usually the, the, the operating uh, operation management department or the, 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 the production manager or something. Uh, he's, he identified four major causes for the bullweep effect, right? What those causes are, demand forecast updating. This is precisely what you were doing. Depending on, on the, the, the idea you had of the demand of your customer, you were making decisions of how much you would order to your supplier, trying to, to do, try, trying to optimize your results. Right? This is demand forecasting 
is thinking about what you have to do based on what your your customer did. Um, there are several several, and in fact, we called the the forecast uh, procedures used by organizations because, of course, the operations management and the, the, the management people they are not the guys who, who write their their stock uh, or organizing uh, software. Right? When when we are involved uh, in that, we notice that many companies do the following. For example, the boss says we have to have uh, just to play safe, we should we'll have uh, a stock that is twice the demand of a month, for example. Okay. Notice how now you notice how this will help increase the bullwhip effect when you include that information. Uh, that that's algorithm in your coding. It's very easy. If the if the customer ordered 100 this month and you had not nothing in stock, you have to have twice the demand, so you will order 200 to your to your supplier. And if next week, right, and let's, let's suppose that it arrives in, in one week, right, so, so then you get the 200 with you, right, uh, and then uh, the, the, the demand reduces to 50. You have 200, what you do? You buy nothing, right? So notice how you're doing that with your bullwhip here. You're uh, you, the, the way you, 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 you the, the logic that is introduced in your stock um, uh, software uh, already pushes you towards messing up with the market, right? So, uh, so if demand your demand increases, you increase a lot your 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 order. Then your demand decreases, you decrease more than you should. So you're always taking more. You know, you're, you're taking amplified measures all the time. Another thing that uh, he and claims to be uh, causing um, the bullwhip effect is uh, order batching. What is what is a batch? This is a batch. 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 We produce uh, within a time frame yeah. together. Batch production. Okay. Ba batch production happens. For example, uh, bread is produced in batch production. It depends on the size of your oven. You can produce two hundred uh, rolls of bread at once. Okay. Right, so that's your batch. You you finish a batch, you start a new batch. Uh, it's 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 as you said, it's a set of products that can be produced at once. Uh, in engineering, we talk a lot about it's the economic batch of manufacturing or the economic batch of purchasing, uh, and that usually relates. For example, if if it's the economic batch of purchasing, it relates to the sometimes even to the size of the truck that you'll be using to. To transport the merchant, uh, to, to transport the goods. Uh, for example, um, you want to buy um, what could that be? Uh, tiles for a house, right? And those tiles will come all the way from Italy. Right? Uh, you can buy, uh, let's say, half a truck load of tiles, but the transportation of it will cost the same as buying a full truck load. Does that mean that you should buy a full truck load? I mean, if you only, uh, if we're simply, this is a simple example here, but if you only need the tiles for your home, buying twice as much uh, will cause a, a problem because you are not going to use that, those additional tiles. They will become stock, they will, they will be a hassle. Uh, and uh, although the, the, the cost per unit reduces if you, if you buy the full truck loads, uh, you, that, that will cause you that, that will not be uh, uh, reasonable to you. But for companies that, instead of, it, it's not tiles for your house, it's if it's tiles for your customers, and you know that the, you know, what your customers will demand this month is half a truck. And then you already think, but you know, bringing the full truck loads, I will only pay for one trip, uh, and next month I can save because uh, I will already have the stock to attend the customers that will show up next month. And it's true. Uh, it's an economical uh, batch to buy the full truck load because you, you, you only pay for one. To, you, you cannot pay for half a truck. You always, even if you only bring half a truck goods, uh, you are paying for a full truck because because uh, you, you get the, the full truck is, is is coming from there here anyway. And, um, and so we, uh, we 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 notice that we generate to the next link. We generate that bullwhip because they will probably think 
that we are buying uh, a full truck because we need a full truck. And we are actually buying a full truck because that is uh, an, uh, a batch that is more economically feasible for us at this moment. So things that we could try and think about doing is, uh, is it possible for us to reduce the, the economical batch of purchase or the economical batch of production or whatever? Because if we can do that, we, we, we have much more flexibility in deciding the volumes we want to buy. I'm not sure if there is much that we can do with respect to that using IT specifically, but it's, it's worth thinking because it, it may be possible. Right? Uh, price fluctuation. How does that lead to bull whip effect? Again, Maria knows the market very well. She knows exactly my, my behavior as a consumer. She knows my demand. And, then she, and, and she also knows that there is some price fluctuation that the, the price that the, the market is practicing now is lower than typical. So she says, well, you know, I will buy some extra stock because I know that in the future I'll be able to sell that. And when she does that, she also pulls the, the whip, right? She also shakes the whip. Uh, and finally, a, he mentions the rationing and shortage gaming. It happens uh, often that uh, when we know that a product we will lack in the market, we and, and, and let's say and we are the, the supplier, we will think, well, we don't want to leave any, any of our customers unattended. So what we'll do is, maybe a policy could be, we will support the customers with half their needs. Everyone will be half happy. Okay, uh, think of uh, petrol during this strike here. Uh, 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 a, a petrol station could tell its uh, customers, Look, there's no full tank for anyone. It's only half a tank because I prefer to have 100% of my of my customers uh, supported to some extent, than a few of them very luckily uh, supported in full and the others not uh, not not being able to 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 be to be attended. Right? Uh, well, if they do that, and you have and they say it's it's going to be only half the tank, and you have a small car and a big car, which one will you take to fuel? The big car, the big car, because they're saying they're going to give you half of uh, what you are ordering, right? So this happens sometimes uh, also, and, and, this, and, and there's this bargain, this gaming, because as you know that they will already have some restrictions to how much they will uh, give you, you change your order. So many times uh, people may say, See, well, I usually buy, or, or in the past I used to buy 50 units, but now I'll go there, I'll ask for, for 50 units, and they will say, sorry, I'll only be able to give you 25 because we are in a period where we have to support everyone, so our policy is only give half of what you ask. Then you go there and ask for 100. Yeah. Well, but sometimes uh, the manufacturer does have to like, keep, uh, keep the product in demand so mm -hmm. it's not saturate the market. You know what? One thing that I notice, uh, for example, manufact uh, uh, car, car car assemblers, what they do is it's almost the opposite. It is when when the market is really hit up, when when everyone is buying, uh, you have your let's say your your share. Then when the market suddenly goes down because of the, the I mean the whip, the bull whip market means that it will go up and down. And right, as what happened to you here, you you either order a lot or you order nothing. And then you know what the manufacturers say? I'm sorry, if last month you ordered 200 cars, I already used that in my, my forecast, in my predictions, and I plan, I, so this month the market is going down, I understand that, but you still have to get uh, 100 cars. And they will push those 100 cars to you and uh, charge you for that, and you cannot complain, considering that if, if you are part of their, let's say if you're a, a commissioned uh, partner or something, or you know a company that always works with them, they do that. Uh, it's, a, it's one way that they find to reduce the bull whip effect. Uh, and it's a way that they also uh, make you a little more responsible when asking large numbers. Think if you ask a large number this month, that is also being, to, uh, that's going to be considered in, in, your, ne your, in your next month uh, purchase. It sort of already determine, determines it to, to some extent. Okay, so uh, this is a paper in which uh, he describes all these things. Uh, if uh, again, uh, his the authors here are interested in uh, discussing this with people that are 
stock managers or managers of inventory or uh, he's not talking specifically to computer scientists but uh, I always think that we have to be if we want to think of uh, uh, our relevance in organizations it's it's good if we understand the problems of others in that organization so that we can try and, and help solving them um, I think this is for this paper is it ah this, this is an interesting table here uh, a table in which they discuss the sorry the the way you can coordinate supply chain activities with uh, with, with others so well here, here uh, uh, he again mentions all the causes of the bullweep effect the demand forecast updates order batching price fluctuations and shortage gaming those that had appeared in a, in a previous page and then uh, 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 he discusses how we can uh, improve let's say the, the, the information on information sharing this is very important to us being people in the information fields right uh, for example with respect to the demand forecast update uh, he suggests understanding the system dynamics uh, use the data that you get from the point of sale as I told you with for Boticario you know go there and instead of speculating on what is happening get that information and use it to decide your own uh, uh, forecast it's much more reliable to get the information that you get from the po point of sale the point of sale is the one that is directly uh, interacting with the end customer okay uh, so use the data that Mariam has here not the information uh, that the manufacturer has uh, three or four layers back electronic data interchange remember I mentioned this uh, technology here this is worth uh, paying attention uh, it's the, the the way you you exchange information with, with your partners organization the internet computer assisted ordering and so on and so forth um, with respect to order batching <coughs> uh, he also suggests here a few things that you can do uh, nothing about price fluctuations because in general price fluctuations would lead you to speculate and what they want to do is reduce speculation reduce uh, the forecasting or and with respect to, to the shortage uh, gaming, um, he suggests sharing sales, capacity, and inventory data, and so on. Uh, and then uh, he also mentions something about the channel alignment, operation efficiency. Uh, you know, again, if you're interested in the bullweep effect, this will be uh, something to pay attention to. Mm, I think uh, uh, this is it. Uh, in fact, I had already planned uh, to to discuss the, the this paper this is a, a holy paper with you only on, on Friday morning which means that we're good with timing uh, we I was concerned that we were not going to have enough time to do things the way I wished but I think we are, we're going at, at a pace that is it's not too I mean we're not not going too fast right uh, but we're going at, at, at a pace that you you can follow uh, so this means that we'll have a little extra time on on Friday and that I will be able to maybe talk about a few things that I was not finding a way of including here uh, for Friday morning uh, I included uh, uh, the interview with Michael Dell right this is a a paper I've, I've talked a little bit about it uh, already but this is a paper that I wished I mean if, if you are to read something before our class read this uh, interview with Michael Dell it's easy to read uh, it's, a, it's a very detailed inf uh, uh, interview I, in fact I do not believe that it happened the way that it's reported here in the Harvard Business Review right it seems for me it's it's such a, a clever uh, interview that I think that this has this was one of those planned things you know like you send the questions and then uh, the guy discusses all the answers that he wants to give with his uh, people the directors of the company and so on because they really tell the strategy of uh, Dell's company in a very clear way uh, in a way that it's hard for us to find any companies telling their their strategy and I believe that Michael Dell does that because he uh, understood together with uh, you know the other strategists in, in, in Dell he believed that this interview would be important so the world finally understood the difference between Dell's value proposition and the and, and, and IBM and Compaq and, and HP they use this to show the world what their business was about they call it virtual integration 
uh, and it's it's very powerful. I, I, I've read this obviously. I've read this paper many times. I will not even read it again because I, I know most of it by heart, having read probably more than 50 times. But I, I have to admit that each time that I read this paper, I found something else in between lines. You know, things that oh, I had not thought of that yet. Uh, it, it was Michael Dell's way of uh, conducting uh, Dell Company was really clever. Dell doesn't work that way any longer. So one of the things that you will notice is, so is this a, a model that doesn't work any longer? Well, Dell was, uh, Dell, the company Dell was made famous at the beginning because of their desktop computers. And again, the, the, the advantage that he had selling those computers through the internet was that being it a modular product, he could develop the, what the, 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 the build the dialogue with the customer, develop virtual intimacy with the customers, right? Do all those things that appear in the papers that we have already discussed. Uh, and he could do that in a way that nobody else could. Uh, so very, very, I think it's very impactful. It's a pity that this product is not what uh, the customer is interested in longer. When we became, when we, we changed the, 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 the desktop PC for notebooks and mobile phones, uh, the markets changed more radically than even Michael Dell could possibly predict. Um, uh, they also focused on customer service. Yeah, well, it's still it's still a very interesting company to, to follow. But you know, uh, the, the the company grew so big, and then suddenly it shrank to a, to an extent that Michael Dell was able to go to the market and buy all the shares back. So uh, Dell was so so cheap in the stock market that he went there with one of these small funds, and they bought all the shares back to gain uh, to, to to get more agile again. Because when you when you're in the stock market, you lose some of your ability to do whatever you want because you have a lot of a lot of partners, right? Uh, so, but but I, but I want you to do, don't get this uh, less interested in the paper because it doesn't work for Dell any longer. I, I still think that this virtual integration is something that a lot of other business, a lot of other areas uh, could benefit from. Any area that can, uh, and, and and then we have to refer again to the three stages uh, of um, th sorry, the three vectors of virtual organization by your. Uncle Venkatraman, uh, uh, any company that, that 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 sees that they can uh, build products that they can sell to each to different customers in a customized way, mm -hmm. uh, and, and mainly based on, a, on on the fact that the product is modular, can benefit from this. So any company that can turn their product into a modular product can start selling their products the way Dell proposed here with all those advantages that we already saw Nike trying to, to benefit from, uh, Levi's and all the other examples that I gave you here of you sell first, you deliver later. So you even change the, 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 the financial uh, money flow, uh, cash flow, uh, and, 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 and have the customer pay before receiving the, the product. So again, I uh, hope you from now until, I don't know if, what, what class you have uh, tomorrow, but then you find time at least to read beforehand uh, Margarita because this will allow us to have a great discussion and for this specifically I will bring several questions that I will be asking you to help me answer right uh, in our in our class on on, on, on Friday uh, so that we uh, so that we can deal with all the important topics so there's a, my, my idea is to bring some 20 questions each one of them focusing on Something that is very evident, or something that I have already read in the in between lines, let's say, and that I want to share with you, right? Uh, in in our um, during the break uh, this afternoon, Wei was asking me about the how, how the questions of the exam are going to be. Uh, I have already planned your exam the following way: for each one of these papers that I discuss here with you, there's going to be one question. So it will end up that you have, I think. Uh, I don't know, maybe eight, eight questions, eight or I think eight, eight questions in the. In well, the we only two papers every day, so it's six papers. No, no then, then it would be in twelve papers. Twelve papers. But yeah, if you, if, you, if you talk two in the morning and twelve. But anyway, I, I don't, I don't remember how many they are. But it's, it's these papers here. For each one of them, there will be one broad question, one broad question about the, the topic, and it's a broad question that I want you to answer with whatever you've learned in class, whatever you learned. Uh, re re rewatching uh, the videos that, by the way, I don't know if you've seen, but uh, the videos from yesterday are, are already there in the mm -hmm. in the Moodle uh, platform. Uh, 
and, uh, and 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 whatever you are able to read. Right? And again, if it if there are eight questions, I will say choose four. Okay. So choose four. Why? Because I, I planned the questions to be broad enough so that you can answer in a free way, but at the same time, uh, it's it's free way. But there is a correct answer in the way that there are, there are a lot of things that are not. If it's not part of the paper, it's it's it shouldn't be there, right? Um, so, but I want to give you the possibility of saying, well, this paper I did not get so well, or whatever. So I'll choose that other one to focus. There will also be a, one question about the beer game. You can choose. Uh, among uh, among uh, the several questions that are included there, half of those to answer. And then uh, I will ask you to answer uh, not in the typical um, engineer's way, that is, the least I write the best. Right? Do it the opposite. Remember that Mr. Venkatraman and, and all our authors, they write much more than maybe you would think they should. You, you can probably transform their, their papers into a diagram that will fit in one page. right? but they didn't write a diagram because if it was just a diagram someone looking at the diagram would not understand it after after you you've read it then you understand the whole thing okay uh, i want you to make sure that you convince me that you understood that topic or that you learned something from that topic and this is, will be what will differentiate among those that will probably get I, the, the french system to me is, is really weird but someone who will get 20 out of 20 and someone who will get i don't know what what is a non-failing uh, minimum Mark yeah, 10, ten out of twenty, right? Uh, some uh, may, maybe uh, someone will get twenty. Maybe someone uh, again. My idea is that whoever is serious and and is here every day and everything is not going to fail. But I will make the difference. Try to make the difference in a subjective way because again, here there's no zero and one. It's different to to a math class that you go there and someone that is the student who gets nine point eight and the other one got nine point seventy five and you know what this is better than that, right? Uh, I, I can tell you that maybe an 18 out of 20 and a 16 out of 20 may be the result simply of the order in which I read. And for some reason, I got more impressed by by his one's uh, answer than the others. It's again, it's very qualitative. But I can tell you again that a 16 or 18 or a 20 out of 20 are very good uh, marks, and maybe a 10 out of 20. Uh, should at least uh, uh, mean that I say, well, I wish you, you, you could go a little uh, deeper into, into this because I, I, I really think, I, I'm really convinced, at least for, 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 for most of my Brazilian students, that this is one of the classes that could affect the most your future, your future in the, in the, the, the future of the ego in, in, in yourselves, right? Uh, I know that not everyone wants to become the ego, but even those who are the ants and, and do a perfect and beautiful job of being the most competent ant in the, the tree of uh, forest, they still want to be a little like the ego in showing their value to the organizations where they work and, 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 and to the companies where they work. So even in those cases, I still think that if you can get a, a broader perspective of how technology affects uh, your life and your work and the life of, of the company where you work and everything, that will make a, a huge difference to, to you. So uh, I've, I've heard many times students saying, well, it seemed when we were doing that, that that was a, you know, just a talk. And it is. But uh, that was what uh, later on, at, at some time, allowed me to take a decision that I would have taken in a different uh, path. And I thought that that made the difference in that case. So I, I'm, this is something that I like about this topic. Uh, I teach other subjects as well. As well. But I think, I think that there are subjects that open our minds and there, there are subjects that narrow uh, our minds. We need all of them. Uh, but uh, but it's good to have some uh, opening uh, opening eyes um, topics in the middle, okay? But do, do not get too concerned about the the, the exams. Again, uh, I know that there are, there are some topics and some classes that the exam is really difficult. I mean, here the, the worst that can happen is that you you will show me well. I I uh, yeah I I like the beer game. I didn't understand, it, but please, if you didn't understand it yet, go back to those to to. to to, 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 to the yeah to, to our beer game and see what 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 happened when the the retailer did something how that affected the next level uh, how each one was trying to optimize their own decisions and by doing that how that made us less effective than if we were we were working together okay all right I think this is it for today uh, we we meet uh, Friday uh, what nine o'clock in the morning. Yes, Friday, I'll already bring my 
my bag with me because from here in the afternoon I'll go straight to the airport.